Hello there lovely crafters, it's Terry from Vegas Test Create and I'm here today to share with you a tutorial using the brand new A Book of Shared Memories collection die set. Now this is a, well, let's just say it's not your ordinary memory book making kit. It is absolutely jam-packed of dies, two full A4 sheets full of dies there's three different closure mechanisms to close your box so you actually get a box um, that houses your memory album so there are three different sizes of memory album but the smallest one has got a box that you can make that I will show you step by step how to make and it's got its own closure mechanism and everything it's really really cool but very accessible and I will show you exactly how to make it in this tutorial <laughs> try to get it to shut again now there you go it's shut so yeah join me now while i show you the contents of the kit explain why i love it so much and if you want to buy this kit or you're thinking about it or you've just bought it i'm sure that i can offer you some tips and inspiration with this tutorial video so let's dive in shall we so with this die set it is absolutely packed there is literally no room on the acetate for any other dies it's a very generous die set and as you can see here there are three different sizes and the largest one is beautifully large in fact if i get a, a ruler i can tell you that it is about 10 inches in length and just over 8 inches in height so it's beautifully large so if you want a really nice decent size memory album this is one of the larger ones that tonic do which is perfect for sort of like lots of photos and memorabilia for things like weddings and big special occasions and stuff like that but the most unique element i think of this kit is that it actually allows you to make this gift box so using the smallest die which is get the ruler out again five and three quarter inches by just under five inches so it's a nice small size so making a mini album using uh, pages of this size and obviously we have the smaller layers as well this will fit into the box the other two the medium and the large will not fit in the box and also with this kit so seasoned memory book makers will know that there are like a multitude of different ways of creating the binding mechanism and spine so you might just about be able to see here that this small album which is the one that I'll be showing you how to make today has a uh, ribbon closure basically if you cut out the smallest page it's got this beautiful debossed element and then the cutting line is open and then this die can be used even for the largest die set but it's got these notches on it so and then there's a notch on the actual die here and they correspond so if you place the upward curve of the indentation on both sides if you line it up like that and then add a bit of tape so you can see there if you do that then what you get is this so you get the holes there for a ribbon mechanism i've scored then on the indentation so that's the score line so that will be where the page is open and closed and then you also get 
this other dye which is I believe a decorative dye to put over the top also to strengthen it as well so it lines up the same you can see through the back there that the, the holes are the same size so what I'm going to do in order to make this tutorial as useful and inspiring as possible but not to be overly long so that you get bored is I am going to do all of the prep work off camera so all of the die cutting I'll do some of the assembly on camera this is an ideal set for brand new people to memory albums because it's a complete set and it's got the simple ribbon mechanism so you don't need to worry about buying an additional method of making a spine and obviously you get the box as well so this is perfect for you seasoned memory album makers to add to your collection also perfect for beginners so I'm going to show you how to assemble the box because that is the most unique element of the kit I've just shown you how to actually cut your dies and make your holes for the ribbon mechanism so I'll show you how the ribbon mechanism works and there's also two different methods of closure so there's this one here which is using this die and that sort of like is a clasp that moves like that or you can use key and lock mechanism shown on this large memory album and also on the box so let's dive in shall we okay so as I said I am doing a lot of the prep off camera so I have created the base pieces for the box so you need to cut out four of this large die so basically it's going to be a top and a bottom uh, and then two of them so one for each side I decided to decorate the top sort of go all out and use all the layering dies and make it really blingy and then the bottom I've just used the outer die and some patterned paper and just to mention my colour scheme is basically using lots of products from the coral skies trend with the addition of bubblegum pink because it works beautifully with this collection and also just a little bit of scrap ivory i think this is the 300 gsm ivory cardstock and i've used two of the large sentiments so you've got a book of shared and then you can have lives memories dreams i think um, so there's various different options there so i've gone for a book of shared lives you can see that i added a little drop shadow there just to make it pop against the layers so essentially these are all the same size so but one is meant to fit inside the other so the instructions tell you that when you're assembling the first one that you assemble it properly as you would you know straight up to the edge making sure it's all very tight and then the other one you assemble loose more loosely so you're sort of leaving a gap and this allows one to slide into the other so it will actually be this side will be the tight one and that one will be the the looser one if i want um this side to go of, of the box to go inside that side of the box so and it says to leave the back piece till last which kind of makes sense i guess because you're sort of working from the outside in some of the sides have uh the uh, have sides <laughs> and then there's a gap here obviously so that uh this can overlap across there up to about there-ish which then accommodates the memory book so basically assemble this first and then assemble this over the top but very tightly 
so that's what we're going to do rather than you having to watch me in real time doing this i will speed this up it's always a balance when you're editing video you want to give as much information as you can so that the viewer fully understands but without making it hideously long and and sort of pitching it to you to your audience correctly so if you're extremely confident in making things like this and from what i've just explained to you you think i don't need to watch this bit feel free to just fast forward but it's not going to be very long anyway because i am going to speed it up but you can see i went right to the edge there as we usually would when constructing a 3D project, we want to go right up to the edge. And obviously in this case, it's, it's even more important that we do. And also once we've, we're sure that our piece is in the correct position, we use our bone folder just to seal that. Okay. And if you don't have a bone folder, I really would highly recommend that you invest in one because they've just got so many uses. I think this is the Tonic Precision Glide one. And it, I, I did used to have a plastic one. Well, I probably still do somewhere as a backup. But the Precision ones, they feel... There's a sort of certain softness to them. But they, they score just better they're also really good for getting lines out you know if, if you've used if you've die cut something maybe in mirror card and you, your plates are quite scratched and you can see them quite a bit and you can see scratch lines quite a bit they're, they're even good at getting out those so they are very good i have adhered that back panel which it said not to because I was talking and not concentrating. So we really want to take our time with this and not rush because it's really important that this section that goes inside the other section of the box is adhered very tightly and the other box much more loosely so it's best to sort of literally go tab by tab and flap by flap rather than trying to rush and then doing it all and it not fitting together because that would just be heartbreaking <laughs> to be honest wouldn't it so for example this time i am not going to glue the glue tab at the same time I am going to glue the side panel and then I'm going to glue the glue tab. And this way I can ensure that it's as tight as it can possibly be. Remembering this time that this back panel we want to leave till last. okay so that came together really quite easily you'll notice that i have used the peer view 216 gsm at cardstock which is quite lightweight for constructing a 3d make but it's actually fine in this situation because of adding so many mats and layers on top if you add together the gsms of all of these and the side panels and especially the fact that each half a box as it were is doubled up so it's 432 gsm not 216 
on the sides it's actually fine for construction and you'll find that a lot with different tonic makes so now we move on to the second one and this is the one where we need to glue the panels more loosely together so i'm deliberately using less glue so it's going to be about like that that's what what it looks like in the diagram so it's sort of leaving maybe it looks about three millimeters at the end obviously get, get getting gradually narrower as we go down towards the center but there should still be about a one millimeter gap there ish i don't know if it's possible to make it a bit yeah it is actually so i've just pulled that away slightly so it is about one millimeter you can just see through there but i think that's a better option because we at this stage after putting in all of that work we definitely need to ensure that the one side of the box goes into the other side of the box so yeah if we sort of like look at it from the bottom first and then go up so making sure that the the fold lines don't meet yeah i think that looks pretty good so if we move on to the top so with the top i'll make sure that this end lines up with this end so it, it says to leave a slight gap here so it, it's just extending the width so i've just realized that i haven't decorated the side panels for this side but i'll i'll just do that afterwards it might actually be, be a bit easier to adhere the side panels in a pleasing to the eye manner after adhering the, the top to the bottom because it's going to be slightly wider slightly higher so we're going to put glue on just double check yep glue on here making sure that it's straight just going to do a little test yeah so just doing a little test we can see that that does fit into there with this having a bit of a gap it's not going to go in exactly like that it sort of only goes in part in part way but you can see that just by leaving a gap there that it does actually fit in so i mean you could put it in all the way if you wanted to but we don't because otherwise it wouldn't fit our memory album however it would make a lovely little addition to the memory album because you could put trinkets and things in here so for example if you were making it as like a wedding album and like there's little little trinkets and things so that might be a lovely like accompanying little box it's like oh how do you get in there but yeah so that just proves that that will go in beautifully so excellent okay so now it's just a matter of doing the same on this side and then following it round so i'm going to leave probably a larger gap than i need to just to make sure that there is ample room and it's not too like fiddly to to get it in and out there we go okay so i'll speed the next bit up i'm 
okay so uh, the camera just cut out and in my haste I started gluing down this tab but then got waylaid so this last final tab might need a bit of hacking I am thinking purely because th the gap that I've left on this side is smaller than the gap that I left on that side so whilst this piece will line up neatly I, th I think that the inner piece might not so it might just need snipping a little bit because see it seems a little bit baggy like that bit that folds down pretty perfectly but this there's there's like a bit too much of this so I think it might be easier to like cut a little slither out of that but I'm just going to test again it's always just best to check and check and then check again just in case so we know that that slides in and out beautifully the only um, little fiddly bit is because it's got to go over the layers there it probably doesn't need it really I can probably just fudge it but I'm a bit of a perfectionist I like things to look as good as possible just use my new favourite snips tiny little Tim Holtz ones just I'm hoping this doesn't go terribly wrong I don't think it will You won't need to do this um, if you have lined up the top and the bottom the same width but I haven't. This is about 5mm and that's about 3mm. So because of that little difference it's just meaning that this back panel is slightly wonky but that's okay because this will remedy it. Yeah. See now this tab can fold onto that and then this can fold over and that will look much neater. When you glue the top half of this half of the box onto the base ensure that you leave the same amount there so I've put about probably three millimeters here and five or six millimeters there so you probably need four mil on both sides otherwise the back panel gets a bit wonky so you probably won't make much of, as much of a pig's ear of it as I did but I mean you know in terms of pig's ears uh, this isn't really one uh, you can't actually tell it's just that I know that that's a bit wonky but I say the way that I have found to fix it is just by cutting a little slither out that looks pretty perfect from the front and the top can see that there's a slight slight indent there but only if you knew it was there so there we go voila so I am now going to go and decorate the side pieces as uh, to look the same as this side I'm going to add the sentiments onto the box and then I'm going to start decorating my pages for the book so I'll do some of the decorating of the pages on camera just to give you a little bit of inspiration I'll do most of it off camera to 
to avoid the video being hideously long and then when we get to the ribbon closure mechanism I'll show you how to do that and I'll also show you how to do the closure mechanism that I'm going to use so I shall see you back in a moment for some construction of the actual book of shared memories itself okay so as I said I have done the majority of the decoration off camera because I don't want the video to be hideously long but I'll just give you a bit of a flick through and explain one thing that I did which has given a really nice touch so I got a piece of 12 by 12 ivory cardstock as I mentioned I, I used all of the products from the Coral Skies trend so I used the Fantail Firecracker Shimmer Powder tapped it on and then spritz water on it and then I also used the pearled blush sparkle spray over the top as well and it's given some really interesting results it's given some areas where there's lots and lots of interest and then it's given some areas where there isn't as much detail so that just gave me another element to the colour palette that I knew would match the colour palette so it's just something a nice option to consider really and if, if you like your mixed media it's a nice way to add it into an uh, otherwise not mixed media memory album so that's going to be the front page and then I've done a lot of snipping and just leaving places for tuck points so I have used some other stamp and die sets and I'll list everything below I use this one which is the tr tickets and trinkets die and stamp set which I just think is fantastic it's got loads of different ticket types and tags and stamps so I really enjoyed using that so I've created quite a few tickets again because I had a 12 by 12 inch piece of, of cardstock it was decorated I've um, made use of that and I just put a bead of glue around the edge for example this was made by just cutting the smallest decorative layer chopping a bit off i did a lot of chopping at angles as well this is another tuck point or well, one of them is you can't tell it off the top of it's this one <laughs> yeah you can uh, it's the one with that i did a lot of putting colored strips uh, to differentiate between the two it just adds a little bit extra so we've got that one and then dreams and then there's a lovely key the key there's two keys actually uh, because there's three locking mechanisms for the box which is what we'll come on to in a moment after I've shown you how to assemble a page and how to do the binding but there's three methods of locking or closing the box one with one each with the two different size keys and the third one with the, the uh, hook which is the one I'm going to use so again this is another tuck point put in tickets and whatnot real life tickets I've used these obviously to make it look attractive but obviously if if you've made it to gift or you want it to be functional home is where you are there's a couple of stamp sets that I've used that was from the Say It With Sentiments which I really like this stamp set it's got some quite punny and you know funny sentiments as well as sort of general ones and I also have used this best friends one in a moment uh, you'll see that here best friends and I used the coral chic which has worked beautifully on top of that very dark cardstock these little hearts are from that stamp and die set that I just showed you and then there's also some well they're technically for holding photos these are like photo corners so I just used one here so on this one I've got best friends and I've put some some names on there and then to save them flopping around i just put that little hook point in there and then we've got dreams and i use the 
decorated paper for the backing. Another one here, I quite like that one, hopes. Time flies. Memories. Top point. Forever memories. And another one of the the tickets. I just I love the colour scheme. Oh here I've used patterned paper from the paper pad. Here I've used two of the photo corners to hold that's like a placeholder for an actual photo so you could print off a little photo and put that in there or write something on the back so I just put that one there and then there is no one I would rather sail through life with so and I put that I chose that sentiment because this to me looks like bottom of a boat so if you remember back, this kit launched at the time of kit Craft Kit 61. So this sentiment is actually from Tonic Craft Kit 61, as is a bottle. I think it was called Message in a Bottle. So here I had have sprayed some of the sparkle spray onto a pearlescent card page, which gives um, a really nice effect. And then I, I had a little look in Tonic Craft Kit 61 to see if there was anything I wanted to use. And I, I really wanted to use that bottle, so, so I did. And then that's when I chose the sentiment because I thought that really looks like a boat to me. And then obviously like a sky, so so that's the back page that's why it's not decorated and this is the page that we're going to decorate so the back has been decorated and then this is just a really simple way so I cut the page from the pearlescent cardstock then I cut the panel again on the bubblegum pink and then just snipped it off there so essentially made it a layer that covered the whole panel and then I've picked out one of the patterned papers for those of you who have never made a memory album and um, this is just to sort of give you a bit of an inspiration really and show you how easy it is so it's just good to think about colours and having different colours next to each other so you want to have some nice contrast really for example like here and with the other pages this one is the next die down the smallest one and I deliberately chose one that had a nice a good concentration of the shimmer powder here and I've put those were the days on here and then in order to create a tuck point if you haven't got any self-closing tweezers just get them it's so once you've got used to using them it's so much easier so you just want to make sure you sort of position that with an even border and obviously because I used a lot of mixed media products on just regular 216 GSM craft perfect it did cause the cardstock to warp a little bit but it hasn't been problematic if you do find some that's really warped just run it through your die cutting machine and it'll flatten it out I've cut some a strip of the glitter orange cardstock to put across there so really easy to do just line it up with one end and then with a pencil just go slightly right of the area that you want cut then we know that we need to just cut to the left so now we have all of our pages completed it comes to the time where we bind our mini album there are so many different ways of binding an album and as i said earlier you can choose to use any of the spine additions that you might already have in your stash However, for the purposes of this tutorial, I'm just going to show you a really simple way using the three millimeter ribbon, which the navy blazer works perfectly with this color palette. So if you have trimmed off all of your edges 
to the same length then you can just go ahead and use the ribbon and it'll look gorgeous. If you haven't trimmed them then you might have bits that are longer than, the, than others and they're poking out. So really you need to make sure that the front and the back ones are the longest and they're the same length as each other so that it looks neat from the outside. I mean in a perfect world they'd all be the exact same length but it doesn't quite work like that especially when you're gluing two pages together so for example 216 GSM to me didn't feel thick enough for a layer so I was gluing two together. So I mean there's so many there's no like wrong way of doing this basically you just want to get the ribbon all the way through go back on itself and then uh, tie it off you can make it fancy and you can put beads and stuff on it or whatever you want but I'm just going to show you really really basically so if I start off at the bottom and thread through so this is a I'm not sure of the size but it came in a in a stitching kit in a cross stitch kit it's, it's one that will will enable you to use ribbon or twine because that's another one as well if you want it to look quite rustic baker's twine is really nice obviously tonic give us a load of different options and when you when you're putting them through you want ideally the uh, just to sort of twist the ribbon round to make sure that it looks nice from each angle so there we go, we've got a nice stitch at the back and then we go through them all again and just to check that it, it is going through all of them I've got one that's slightly shorter and I say if your ribbon gets twisted like mine seems to keep doing I don't know why then just it, it doesn't take long to uh, get it back to the way it should be and one of the great things about using the ribbon method is that you can easily add extra pages because if you don't bind it off too tightly, if you just tie it in a bow at the end, then you can just undo the bow and then add extra pages because I've got three, six, eight pages in here and you could probably fit double that or even triple in the box so it's something that you can keep adding to so basically what you would do like do to carry on with this is keep going back and forth and then you would go back then down the other way so that there were no gaps so you can see here that we've got a gap a gap between each one so when you get to the end you just go back and just be careful not to poke like through the ribbon just to just go to one side of it and then that will work like that but what I wanted to do well actually there's also well actually let's let's take a step back even further so we already showed you earlier on in the video how to create the holes by lining up the notches so we've got that die and then we've also got this die and that cuts out this so this you could do it in the same colour you could do it in a contrasting colour so it's like extra decoration and it also strengthens the holes now I don't think the holes particularly need strengthening on this project but if you did then you know you could do one of these on each page of the book if you were going to add one of these onto each page so it'll go up to the point where it folds back and then you would snip that off to make it look nice and neat but I wanted to try something different because I noticed that on one of the samples here the sample creator has used this die that you use to create the holes on a contrasting piece of coloured cardstock so pink against the grey and created like a mini spine so I quite fancied trying that so what I did was I got a length 
of cardstock and lined it up and then lined it up with here got the correct width from here to the score line and then trimmed that off and then I put it over and then so this was longer I've trimmed it off I put it over and then and then like bent it back gently and then ran this through the die cutting machine so it already slotted into the holes it had already created so it only had to cut through the other side and then what that's created is like a little a little spine cover for the ribbon to go through so I've made some pencil marks <clears throat> here and here which are just where the notches are and then I rounded it with with a pen so it sort of hides or covers the individual leaves so that's what I'm going to show you so this is new to me I haven't haven't tried this way before but I do like to try new things and why not try it out in a tutorial because then if it all goes terribly wrong I can show you how to fix it <laughs> so I haven't I haven't snipped off the length of I'm just working off the reel apologies if I was out of shot there a bit more fiddly than just doing the leaves okay so we've got to the end now <clears throat> so now we go back try to not go through the ribbon just in case you do have to go back and t remove any stitches if you can just go like slightly higher because it'll level out once it goes through And I really like the way this looks with the cute little spine. So whoever created this in the uh, the tonic craft room, thank you. I've totally cased your make and I love it. You'll have to let me know in the comments, have you tried this before? Or is this new to you? Let's just check. Check all my pages are uh, 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 stuck together. Yeah, look how lovely. See, it binds them together beautifully, but you can fully open all of the pages. It's it's gorgeous. I really like this method. It looks really nice and neat. A final check so I don't like to uh, finish anything with, without making sure that all the pages are, are okay and not upside down or anything <laughs> perfect 
perfect. Okay, okay, so in order to be able to add additional pages to this, I'm going to cut a decent length of ribbon and then tie it in a bow here at the bottom. There we go. Beautiful. Okie dokie. So that is our book. That is our box. Our book fits beautifully inside our box. And you can feel resistance there. So that's like the back of the uh, of the book. So the next section of the video will be the closure of the box mechanism. As I said, there are three ways. They're all described very thoroughly in your instructions. Um, and I think it would be a waste of time me explaining all three because the the latch method that I'm going to explain is the same as one of the key ones and then the other key is different and I'm sure one of my fellow teammates will be using the lock and key mechanisms hopefully one will do one and one will do the other so I shall just set up for that and I'll see you back in a moment Okay, so now our book is complete with its cute little binding and it fits beautifully inside the box. That's the inner side of the box, the tighter box and you can see that you can add triple the amount of pages and I think I used eight. So now comes the part where we add our lock mechanism to lock the box. Now, <clears throat> as I said, I'm going to show you the one using the little latch. And then there's two key options. And the one key is very similar to this and then the other key is different. In order to construct this, you need two hooks, which are these, two medallions, one strap, got this uh, handy little die which cuts out loads of little circles the smaller ones are axles and the larger ones are caps so for the first part we need two axles Let me move this out of the way slightly two axles two caps two hooks four axles and then two caps on top and the hook the opening is bigger so it should rotate freely on this axle that we're creating and the um the caps we've got one plain one one with a heart one that looks like a press stud and one that's got a little pattern on it which kind of looks like a hook kind of pattern so i'm going to grab my little handy dandy tool because that might come in handy and a little I'll check the nozzles working and a little blob of glue on there what we don't want is anything to go out of line or to end up causing our hook which should rotate but to not rotate so it's worth taking our time over this although it is quite fiddly okay in the middle, I'm going to try and get it in the middle I 
Now I did have an idea. If you suffer with manual dexterity issues and some, you're looking at this and thinking there's no way I'm going to be able to do that. I thought that what a nice option would be because we know how far that goes in what you could do is get a nice length of attractive ribbon and stick it in here along the back outside and tie it on that side then it would just show here and the little bow I do try and think of things like that because having health issues myself I can't do what I used to be able to do and I'm determined that just because we might have disabilities or limited functioning compared to what we used to have that there's always a work around. I can't use my beloved tangerine. I haven't been able to for a good while because my ribs are too painful. Too, too painful for me to rotate. Okay, so that goes on there. So I'm looking from the sides to try as best I can to make sure that these are lined up centrally and this will be the bit that the hook will rotate on because it's smaller than the caps. The caps are to keep the hook on. Now let's have a look at these. So that one looks like a hook action and that one looks like a press stud. So I'm going to go with the hook action one. Okay. That's what it looks like from the bottom. I'm just going to give it a little look around from all angles to, to make sure that it's oh yeah look it's rotating great so we'll leave that to one side to dry then for the next part we need our strap create your medallion strap by stacking and adhering your die cut strap axles and medallions as shown so for this one we need four axles and two medallions but i do think that this is such a fabulous addition to the my memory book collection because I have, there's no other one that I know of that has a box with it. Plus, if I were to give this as a, a gift to somebody, I would make the album and the box, but then I would modify the box. So I would do it so that it closes. So it's an octagon shape. And then when you open it, this bit is open and then you can put treats in there or people can put treasured memories and whatnot in there yep central ish this works so if i think about the position now because this is going to hook around the medallion to stay in place it's going to be like that so it's just making sure that i like my positioning basically so if i, if I put that there next to it i only hold on to that and then move that round okay great so i am going to put some scissors on there And then put a nice dollop of glue and then hook this round and 
and then I'm going to put a pokey tool underneath here while my glue stack dries because I don't want my hook if there's any errant glue I don't want my hook to um, get stuck I know that rhymes and I didn't even try so there we go so I've just got to wait for that to grip on then I'm going to fold that under take out this box stick that on the bottom and then I will be back in a moment with the completed article and here we go my lovelies the completed article so we have a working closure mechanism we have the two halves of the box which house an adorable little mini album the lock mechanism is very nicely secure considering it's actually quite weighty the book and the two halves of the box all together you basically do that and lift up the latch and then when you want to lock it again you do that so you can unhook it take it out and there is your memory book so there we go and then just showing how it closes you put that in there so I will pop that in there and lock that there so there we go so I really hope that you've enjoyed that tutorial if you do have any questions feel free to leave them in the comments section below I always reply to all of my comments so if you have found value in this video and picked up some tips and enjoyed me including the bloopers and the honesty of real crafting I would greatly appreciate it if you would use your thumb give the video a like and leave me a little encouraging comment those things help YouTube to know that people like and value my videos and they then show them to more people which helps my channel to grow and if you really liked the video and not already a subscriber then this is what I do I do it a lot and I'd love to have you subscribed and part of the Vigs Test Creates little crafty family so that's all from me today and I'll see you soon with some more crafty goodness bye for now